Are we good? Someone, someone load it and. Uh, I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't trust when you say we're live anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. Let's see. This, is I think, this all an I, need to start, I need to start the new. Uh, this is all an experiment. I don't think that everything went live. It just started now. Um, let's see. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah, we're, we're live. Just sent me this. We're live. Oh, yeah, yeah. we're live. We're live. We're official. Live on a delay. Okay, live excellent. Everyone, so sorry, everyone who's here right now. Yep. And we got it. Like delay. There was a 15 minute delay. I don't know what happened, but it was like a timer that was set on YouTube. We're, we'll figure that out afterwards and edit it out in post. <laughs> hey, everyone. Um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for supporting Acting for a Cause and our little project that started just a few weeks ago as a response to what's going on with the pandemic. Um, I just made the speech, but I'm going to make it again because we are here together to hear Twelfth Night, uh, which is a wonderful play. It was actually the follow-up play that Shakespeare wrote to Hamlet. Um, we are uh, very, very pleased to bring this all to you today with a dream cast, literally. Um, but before talking about, uh, or actually reading the show, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Acting for a Cause and the charity. Uh, Acting for a Cause, like I said, is a grassroots movement. Uh, we started just a few weeks ago and we read a play every Friday at 4 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. in LA, 5 p.m. in New York, and anywhere else in the world, you can look up the corresponding time. Um, we, our first play read was The Importance of Being Earnest, and that was starring Ali Cravalho from Disney's Moana. Our second play read was This Is Our Youth, starring Academy Award nominee Florence Pugh. Our third play read was a gender-swapped Hamlet with Willa Fitzgerald from MTV Screams Hamlet and Brandon Flynn as Ophelia. Our fourth read was Romeo and Juliet, starring Margaret Qualley and David Cornsweet, which was also released on the date of Hollywood's release. These are not pre-recorded. We're actually going live right now. Uh, our fifth read was Pride and Prejudice. It's our most viewed read to date with Jacob Lordy as Mr. Darcy. And our last read from last week was Jane Eyre starring Natalia Dyer uh, as Jane Eyre. Um, so if you like any of those titles, go back and watch them. And in the meantime, this is a great opportunity to subscribe because every Friday we read a play and every week the cast is amazing, literally amazing. Um, the only week we're actually going to skip is this week because of Memorial Day, and then we'll be back at it, and we don't have any plans to stop this because right now every live theater is closed, and we want to do two things. We want to provide that sort of live theater, but also we want to make a difference. So we are connected with the EIF. The EIF Entertainment Industry Foundation was founded by the Warner Brothers and Humphrey Bogart and a multitude of great, wonderful people. Uh, from old golden age Hollywood who wanted to do the same thing. They wanted to make a difference. They wanted to be activists. And so they formed this organization specifically to help fund arts education. Um, so, you know, after this is all over and we reopen schools, schools will not have the same funding they had before because we just went through a financial crisis too. So arts education will be the first to be cut. We don't want that to happen. So every 50% 50, 50 of the funds will be going towards the EIF, towards this fund that will be helping arts education. The other 50% will be donated as emergency relief for COVID-19, specifically to Mount Sinai Hospital in Chicago. In Chicago, more than 75% of uh, patients are from low-income backgrounds. And uh, that's a major issue that has to do with bad policy and bad communication. Um, but it's not like we have, like we're, we're in that moment where we say we can't go back in time and change it. Yes, we can, we're living it right now. We can do something to help slow down the spread of the pandemic in these low income areas. And by the number one way is finding hospitals that are not well funded uh, and helping fund them. And that's what we're doing. Um, so 50% to Mount Sinai, 50% to the EIF. Please, we don't ticket this event as part of our mission, um, but we do suggest that everyone make a donation. If I look at everyone watching live right now, if everyone gave $5, we'll have uh, raised three times as much as any reading yet. So please, even if you're underage and don't have a credit card, go to your parent and say, I wanna donate $5 to a charity. I bet they'll say yes. If it's in your ability, do it right now. This is your opportunity. Um, so uh, while you open actingforacause.org, I'm going to go ahead and switch the screen to all of our wonderful artists who are part of this. And uh, we will give it a second here while everyone gets into Zen mode. <laughs> Out of all plays, this requires the least Zen mode. This is the most chaotic, <laughs> evil play ever. <laughs> um, let us begin. Are, are we ready uh, to begin Twelfth Night? Everyone, 
Speak now yep. or forever, hold your peace. Let's do it. Everyone's been waiting so patiently. Again, thank you for waiting through the technical issues that we were experiencing. Uh, and thus we begin Twelfth Night, or what you will, by William Shakespeare, Act One at Orsino's Palace. If music be the food of love, play on. Give me excess of it, that surfeiting the appetite may sicken and so die. Yes, that strain again, it, it had a dying fall. Oh, it came over my ear like a sweet sound that breathes upon banks of violets, stealing and giving odor. Enough, no more. It's not as sweet as it was before. Oh, spirit of love, how quick and fresh art thou, that notwithstanding the capacity to receive it as the sea so full of shapes is fancy, that it alone is high fantastical. Will you go hunt, my lord? What, Curio? The heart. Why, so I do, the noblest that I have. <clears throat> oh, when mine eyes did see Olivia first, methought she purged the air of pestilence. <sighs> and How now? Valentine. What news from her? So please, my lord, I'm, I might not be admitted, but from her handmaid do return this answer. The element itself, till seven years heat, shall not be behold her face at ample view. But like a cloistress, she will veil it walk and water once a day her chamber round with eye offending brine. All this to season a brother's dead love, which she would keep fresh and lasting in her sad remembrance. Oh, she hath that heart of fine frame to pay this debt of love, but to a brother. How will she love when the rich golden shaft hath killed the flock of all afflictions else that live in her? Away before me to sweet beds of flowers, love thoughts lie rich when canopied with flowers. All exit except the attendant who sits at the piano. We are now at the sea coast and enters Viola and the captain. What country, friend, is this? This is Illyria, lady. And what should I do in Illyria? My brother, he is in Elysium. Perchance he is not drowned. What think you, sir? It is perchance that you yourself were saved. Oh, my poor brother. And so perchance may he is. True, madame, and to comfort you with chance, assure yourself after your ship did split, I saw your brother bind himself to a strong mast that lived upon the sea. I saw him hold acquaintance with the waves so long as I could see. The saying, sir, there's gold. Knowest thou this country? I am a damn well, for I was bred and born not three hours' travel from this very place. The governs here? A noble duke in nature as a name. What is the name? Orsino. Orsino? I've heard my father say his name. He was a bachelor then. And so is now, or was so very late, as you know. What great ones do the less will prattle of, and that he does not seek, or does seek, the love of fair Ophi Olivia. What is she? A virtuous maid, the daughter of a count that died some twelve months since, then leaving her, in the protection of his son, her brother, who also shortly died. Oh, that I served that lady. That were hard to compass, because she will admit no kind of suit, nor not the Duke's. There is a fair behavior in thee, Sirrah, I prithee, and I'll pay thee bountifully. Conceal me what I am, and be my aid for such disguise as haply shall become the form of my intent. I'll serve this Duke. Thou shalt present me as a servant to him. What else my hap to time I will commit, only shape thy thou silence to my wit. Be you his servant, and your mute I'll be. <laughs> when my tongue blabs, then let my eyes not see. I thank thee. Lead me on. They exit, and we enter Olivia's house, Sir Toby Belch and Mariah. What a plague means my niece to take the death of her brother thus? Oh, I am sure might... there's an end of life. Sir Toby, you must come in earlier o' nights. Your cousin, my lady, takes great exceptions to your ill hours. Why, let her accept before accepted. Aye. 
but you must confine yourself within the modest limits of order. Confine? Oh, I'll confine myself no finer than I am. These clothes are good enough to drink in, and uh, so be these boots too, and then be not, let them hang themselves in their own straps. It, that quaffing and drinking will undo you. I heard my lady talk of it yesterday. And uh, of a foolish knight that you brought in one night here to be her wooer? Who? S Sir Andrew? I he. Why, he has 3,000 ducats a year. I but he'll have but a year in all those ducats. He's a very fool and a prodigal. By this hand, they are scoundrels and subtractors that say so of him. Who are they? They that add, moreover, he's drunk, nightly, in your company. <sighs> With drinking healths to my niece. I'll drink to her as long as there is a passage in my throat and a drink in Illyria. Mm, what wench? Castellano Vulgo, for here comes Sir Andrew Eggyface. <sighs> Sir Toby Belch, how now, Sir Toby? Sweet Sir Andrew. Bless you, fair shrew. And you too, sir. A cost, Sir Andrew, a cost. Uh, what's that? My niece's chambermaid. Oh. <laughs> Good mistress of cost, I do desire better acquaintance. My name is Mary, sir. Good mistress, Mary. Mary, a cost. You mistake, knight. A cost is front her, board her, woo her, sail her. Oh, by no. my trough, I would not undertake her in this company. Is that the meaning of a cost? Fare you well, gentlemen. And thou let parts of Sir Andrew. Would thou mightest never draw sword again? You part so, mistress, I would I might never draw sword again. Fair lady, do you think you have fools in hand? Sir, I have you not by the hand. Mary, but you shall have, and here's my hand. No, sir, thought is free. I pray you bring your hand to the buttery bar and let it drink. Wherefore, sweetheart? Uh, but what's your jest? <laughs> a dry jest, sir. Ah, uh, are you full of them? Aye, sir. I have them at my finger's ends. Mary, now, I let go your hand. I am barren. Exits Mariah. Oh, knight, thou lackest a cup of cannery. When did I see thee so put down? Never in your life, I think, unless you see canary put me down. Methinks sometimes I have no more wit than a Christian or an ordinary man has, but I am a great eater of beef, and I believe that does harm to my wit. No question. And I thought that I'd forswear it. I'll ride home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Pourquoi, my dear knight? Uh, what is pourquoi? Like, do or not do? Faith, I'll home tomorrow. Sir Toby, your niece will not be seen, or if she'll be, it's four to one, she'll none of me. The count himself here hard by woos her. She'll none are the count. She'll not match above her degree, neither in estate, ears, nor wit. I have heard her swear it. Tut, there's life in it, man. <sighs> I'll stay a month longer. I am a fellow of the strangest mind in the world. I delight in masks and revels sometimes altogether. Art thou good at these nickshaws, knight? As any man in Illyria, whatsoever he be under the degree of my betters, and yet I will not compare with an old man. What is thy excellence in a galliard, knight? Hey, <laughs> I can cut a caper. And I can cut the mutton on it. And I think... I had the back trick simply as strong as any man in Illyria. Wherefore are these things hid? Why dost thou not go to church in a galliard and come home in a caranto? My very walk should be a jig. I would not so much as make water, but in a syncopace. Oh, shall we set about some revels? What shall we do else? 
Were we not born under Taurus? Taurus, that is sides and heart. No, sir. It is thighs and legs. Let me see the caper. <laughs> higher, higher. Excellent. They exit, and we enter Valentine and Olivia, who is in a man's attire. Oh, and uh, and Viola, Viola at, in a man's attire at Orsino's palace. If the Duke continues these favors towards you, Cesario, you are like to be much advanced. He hath known you but three days, and already you are no stranger. You either fear his humor or my negligence. You call in questions the continuance of his love. Is he inconstant, sir, in his favors? No, believe me. I thank you. Here comes the count. Enters Orsino, Curio, and attendants. Who saw Cesario, ho? And your attendants, my lord, here. Stand you a while aloof, Cesario. Thou knowest no less but all, I have unscalped to thee the book even of my secret soul. Therefore, good youth, address my gate unto her. Be not denied access, and stand at her doors. And tell them, there thy fixed foot shall grow, till thou have audience. Sure, my noble lord. If she be so abandoned to her sorrow, as it is folk, she never will admit me. Be clamorous and leap civil bounds rather than make an unprofited return. Say I do speak with her, my lord, what then? Oh, then unfold my passion of love. Surprise her with the discourse of my dear faith that shall become to thee well to act my woes. I think not so, my lord. Dear lad, believe it, for they shall yet belie thy happy years. Say thou art a man, Diana's lip is no more smooth and rubious. Thy small pipe is a maiden's organ, shrill in sound. And all is semblative, a woman's part. I know thy constellation is right apt for this affair. Prosper well in this, and thou shalt live as freely as thy lord, to call his fortune thine. I'll do my best to be your lady, yet a bath of strife, where I woo myself would be his wife. They exit and we enter Olivia's house. Enters Mariah and the clown. Mm-hmm, mm-mm, nay. Either tell me where thou hast been or I will not open my lips so wide as it person may enter in way of thy excuse. My lady will hang thee for thy absence. Let her hang me. Oh, okay. You are resolute then? Not so neither, but I am resolved on two points. That if one break, the other will hold, or if both break, your pantaloons fall? <laughs> ah, in good faith, very apt. Well, go thy way. If Sir Toby would leave drinking, thou wert as witty a piece of Eve's flesh as any in Illyria. Oh, peace, you rogue. No more of that. Here comes my lady. Make your excuse wisely. Wish you were best. <sighs> Wit and be thy will. Put me into good fooling. God bless thee, lady. Take thy fool away. Do you not hear her fellows? Take away the lady. <laughs> Go to, you're a dry fool. I'll know more of you. Besides, you grow dishonest. Two faults, Madonna, that drink and good counsel will amend. For give the dry fool drink, then is the fool not dry. Bid the dishonest man mend himself. If he mend, he is no longer dishonest. Anything that's mended is but patched. Virtue that transgresses is but patched with sin, and sin that amends is but patched with virtue. If that this simple syllogism will serve, so. If it will not, what remedy? The lady bade take away the fool, therefore I say again, take her away. Sir, I bade them take away you. Miss Prison in the highest degree. Lady cuculus non facite monacum. That's as much to say as I, I wear not motley in my brain. Good Madonna, give me leave to prove you a fool. Can you do it? Dexterously, good Madonna. Make your proof. I must catechize you for it, Madonna. Good, my mouse of virtue, answer me. Well, sir, for want of other idleness, I'll bide your proof. Good Madonna, why mournest thou? Good fool, for my brother's death. Hmm. I think his soul is in hell, Madonna. 
I know his soul is in heaven, fool. The more fool, Madonna, to mourn for your brother's soul being in heaven. Take away the fool, gentlemen. What think you of this fool, Malvolio? Doth he not mend? Yes, and shall do so until the pangs of death shake him. Infirmity that decays the wise doth ever make the better fool. God send you, sir, a speedy infirmary for the better increasing your folly. How say you to that, Malvolio? I marvel your ladyship takes delight in such a barren rascal. I saw him put down the other day with an ordinary fool that has no more brain than a stone. Look you now, he's out of his guard already. Unless you laugh and minister occasion to him, he is gagged. Oh, you are sick of self-love, Malvolio, and a taste with a distempered appetite. Re-enters Mariah. <clears throat> Madam? There is at the gate a young gentleman much desires to speak with you. From the Count Orsino, is it? I know not, madame. Tis a fair young man and well attended. <laughs> Who of my people hold him in delay? Uh, yeah, Sir Toby, damn your kinsman. Fetch him off, I pray you. He speaks nothing but a madman. Fie on him. Go you, Malvolio. If it be suit from the Count, I am sick or not at home. What you will to dismiss it. Exits Malvolio. Now you see, sir, how your fooling grows old and people dislike it. Enters Sir Toby. By mine honor, half drunk, what is he at the gate, cousin? A, a, gen a gentleman. A gentleman? <laughs> what gentleman? Tis a gentleman, here, plague, oh, these pickle herring, how now, sot? Good Sir Toby. Cousin, cousin, how have you come so early by this lethargy? Lurch, lurchy? Uh, I defile lurchy. There's one at the gate. Aye, Mary, what is he? Let it be the I care not, give me play, say I. It's all one. All I heard were sirens. What's the emergency? Wait, did you say your line? Exits Sir Toby Belch. What's a drunken man like, fool? <laughs> like a drowned man, a fool, and a madman. One draught above the heat makes him a fool, the second mads him, and a third drowns him. Go thou and seek the coroner. Let him sit of my cousin, for he's in the third degree of drink. He's drowned. Go look after him. He is but mad yet, Madonna. And the fool shall go look to the madman. <laughs> Festi exits, and Malvolio re-enters. Madam, yon young fellow swears he will speak with you. I told him you were sick. He takes on him to understand so much and therefore comes to speak with you. I told him you were asleep. He seems to have a foreknowledge of that too and therefore comes to speak with you. What is to be said to him, lady? He's fortified against any denial. Tell him he shall not speak with me. Has been told so and he says he'll stand at your door like a sheriff's post and be the supporter to a bench, but he'll speak with you. What manner of a man is he? A very ill manner. He'll speak with you, will you or no. Of what personage in years is he? Uh, not yet old enough for a man, nor young enough for a boy. Tis with him in standing water between boy and man. He's very well favored, and he speaks very shrewishly. One would think his mother's milk were scarce out of him. Let him approach. Call in my gentlewoman. Gentlewoman! My lady calls. Exits Malvolio and Mariah re-enters. Give me my veil. Come, throw it over my face. We'll once more hear Orsino's embassy. Enters Viola. The Honorable Lady of the House, which is she? Speak to me. I shall answer for her. Your will? Most radiant, exquisite, and unmatchable beauty. I pray you, tell me if this be the Lady of the House, for I never saw her. I would be loath to cast away my speech, but besides that it is excellently well penned, I have, I have taken great pains to con it. Whence came you, sir? I can say a little more than I have studied, and that question's out of my part, good gentle one. 
Give me the modest assurance, if you be the lady of the house, that I may proceed in my speech. Are you a comedian? No. My profound heart, and yet, by the very fangs of malice, I swear that I am not that I play. Are you the lady of the house? If I do not assert myself, I am. Most certain. If you are she, you do usurp yourself. For what is yours to bestow is not yours to reserve. But this is from my commission. I will on with my speech in your praise and then have... And then show you how the heart of my message. Come to what is important in it. I forgive you the praise. Alas, I took great pains to study it, and tis poetical. It is the more like to be fiend. I pray you keep it in. I heard you were saucy at my gates and allowed your approach rather to wonder at you than to hear you. If you be not mad, be gone. If you have reason, be brief. Will you hoist sail, sir? Here lies your way. No, good Swabba, I am here. I am hull here a little longer, some mollification for your giant sweet lady. Tell me your mind, I am a messenger. Sure, you have some hideous matter to deliver, when the courtesy of it is so fearful. Speak your office. It alone concerns your ear. I bring no overture of war, no, no taxation of homage. I hold the olive in my hand. My words are as fun of peace as matter. Yet you began rudely. What are you? What would you? The rudeness that hath appeared in me have I learned from my entertainment. What I am and what I would are this are as secret as man maidenhead to your ears, divinity and to any other's profanation. Give us the place alone. We will hear this divinity. Mariah and the attendants exit. Now, sir, what is your text? Most sweet lady. A comfortable doctrine and much may be said of it. Where lies your text? In Orsino's, in Orsino's bosom. In his bosom? In what chapter of his bosom? To answer by the method in the first of his heart. <laughs> oh, I have read it. It is heresy. Have you no more to say? Good madam, let me see your face. Have you any commission from your lord to negotiate with my face? You are now much out of your text, but we will draw the curtain and show you the picture. Look you, sir. Such a one I was as present. Is it not well done? Excellently done, if God did all. <laughs> it is in grain, sir. It will endure wind and weather. Tis beauty truly blent, whose red and white nature's own sweet and cunning hand laid on. Lady, you are the cruelest she alive. If you will lead these graces to the grave and leave no world copy. <laughs> oh, sir, I will not be so hard heartened. I will give out diverse schedules of my beauty. It shall be inventoried and every particle and utensil labeled to my will. As item, two lips, indifferent red, item, two gray eyes, with lids to them, item, one neck, one chin, and so forth. Were you sent hither to praise me? I see what you are. You are too proud, but if you are the devil, you are fair. My lord and master loves you. How does he love me? With adoration. Fertile tears with groans of thunder, love with sighs of fire. Your Lord does know my mind. I cannot love him. Yet I suppose him virtuous, know him noble, and in dimension and the shape of nature, a gracious person. But yet I cannot love him. He might have took his answer long ago. If I did love you in my master's flame, in your denial, I would find no sense. I would not understand it. Why? What would you? Hmm. Make a willow cabin at your gate and call upon my soul within the house, write loyal patterns of condemned love and sing them aloud, even in the dead of night. Halloo your name to the reverberated hills and make the babbling gossip of the air cry out, Olivia! Oh, you should not rest between the elements of air and earth, but you should pity me. You might do much. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yep, my state is well. I'm a gentleman. Get you to your lord. I cannot love him. Let him send no more, unless perchance you come to me again, to tell me how he takes it. Where are you well? I thank you for your pains. Spend this for me. I am no feed post, lady. Keep your purse. My master, not myself, lacks recompense. Love makes his heart of flint that you shall love, and let your fervor, like my master's, be placed in contempt. Farewell, fair cruelty. Vi Viola exits. 
What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. I'll be sworn thou art. Thy tongue, thy face, thy limbs, actions, and spirit. Do you give thee fivefold blazon? Not too fast. Soft. Soft. Unless the master were the man. How now? Even so quickly may one catch the plague? Methinks I feel this youth's perfections with an invisible and subtle stealth. They creep in at mine eyes. Well, let it be. What ho, Malvolio? Uh, here, madam, at your service. Run after that same peevish messenger, the country's man. He left this ring behind him. Would I or not? Tell him I'll none of it. Desire him not to flatter with his lord, nor hold him up with hopes. I am not for him. If that youth will come this way tomorrow, I'll give him reasons for it. Hi, thee, Malvolio. Madam, I will. Malvolio exits. Fate, show thy force. Ourselves we do not owe. What is decreed must be, and be this so. Olivia exits, and now we are, now we are at the seacoast with Antonio and Sebastian. Will you stay no longer? Nor will you not that I go with you? By your patience, no. My stars shine darkly over me. The malignancy of my fate might perhaps distemper yours. Therefore, I shall crave of you your leave that I, may, that I may bear my evils alone. It were a bad recompense for your love to lay any of them on you. Let me yet know of you whether you are bound. No, sooth, sir. My determinate voyage is mere extravagancy. But I perceive in you so excellent a touch of modesty that you will not extort from me what I am willing to keep in. Therefore, it charges me in manners the rather to express myself. You, you must know of me then, Antonio. My name is Sebastian, which I called Rodrigo. My father was that Sebastian of Messaline, whom I know you have heard of. He left behind him myself and a sister, both born in an hour. If the heavens had been pleased, would we had so ended? But you, sir, altered that for some hour before you took me from the breach of the sea, was my sister drowned. Alas, the day. A lady, sir, though it was said she much resembled me, was yet of many accounted beautiful. But though I could not with such estimable wonder over far believe that, yet thus far I will boldly publish her. She bore a mind that envy could not but call fair. She's drowned already, sir, with salt water, though I seem to drown her remembrance again with more. Pardon me, sir, your bad entertainment. Oh, good Antonio, forgive me for your trouble. If you will not murder me for my love, let me be your servant. If you will not undo what you have done, that is, kill him whom you have recovered, desire it not. Fare ye well at once. My, my bosom is full of kindness, and I am yet so near the manners of my mother that upon the least occasion more, mine eyes will tell tales of me. I am bound to the Count Orsino's court. Farewell. Exit Sebastian. The gentleness of all the gods go with thee. I have many enemies in Orsino's court, else would I very shortly see thee there. But come what may, I do adore thee so, that danger shall seem sport and I will go. Antonio exits and now we are at a street with Viola and Melvolio following. Were you not even now with the Countess Olivia? Even now, sir, on a moderate pace, I have arrived, but hither. She returns this ring to you, sir. You might have saved me the pains to have taken it away yourself. She adds, moreover, that you should put your lord into a desperate assurance that she will none of him. If one thing more, that you never be so hardy to come again in his affairs, unless it be to report your lord's taking of this. Receive it so. She took the ring of me, I'll none of it. Come, sir, you peevishly threw it at her, and her will is it should be returned. If it be worth stooping for, there it lies in your eye. If not, be it his that finds it. I left no ring with her. What means this lady? Fortune forbid my outside have not charmed her. She made good view of me indeed, so much that I thought her eyes had lost her tongue, for she did speak and starts distractedly. She loves me, sure. The cunning of her passion invites me into this churlish messenger. None of my lord's ring. Why he sent her none? I am the man. If it be so, as tis poor lady, 
She better love a, uh, she would better love a dream. Disguise, I see thou art of wickedness. Wherein the pregnant enemy does much, how will this edge? My master loves her dearly, and I, poor monster, fond as much on him. And she mistaken darts on me, what will come of this? O time, thou must and untangle this, not I. It is too hard a knot for me to untie. Exits Viola, and we are now at Olivia's house, enters Sir Andrew and Sir Toby Belch. Approach, Sir Andrew, not to be a bed after midnight, is to be up betimes and de luculo seregere, thou knowest. <laughs> hey, my troth, I know not. But I know to be up late is to be up late. A uh, false conversion. I hate it as an unfilled can to be up after midnight. And to go to bed then is early, <clears throat> so that to go to bed after midnight is to go to bed betimes. Does not our life consist of the four elements? Faith, so they say, but I think it rather consists of eating and drinking. Thouest are a scholar. Let us therefore eat and drink, Marion. I say, a stoop of wine. Here comes the fool and say. How now, my heart? Did you never see the picture of we three? Welcome, ass. <laughs> now let's have a catch. <laughs> By my trough, the fool has an excellent breast. Now a song. Come on, there's a sixpence for you. Let's have a song. Okay, would you have a love song or a song of good life? A love song, a love song. Aye, aye, I care not for good life. <clears throat> oh, mistress mine, where are you roaming? Oh, stay and hear your true love's coming that can sing both high and low. <laughs> Trip no further, pretty sweeting, journeys end in lovers meeting. Every wise man's son doth know. Excellent. Good in faith. Good. Good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they sing what and party. What a caterwauling do you keep here? If my lady have not called up her steward Malvolio and bid him turn you out of doors, ever trust me. Lady, now let's have a catch. Shrew me, the night's an admirable fooling. Oh, for the love of God, shh, peace. There's a big dance number, which is interrupted by good old Malvolio. My masters, are you mad? Or what are you? Have you no wit, manners, nor honesty, but to gabble like tinkers at this time of the night? Do you make an <laughs> alehouse of my lady's house? Did you squeak out your kosher's catches without any mitigation or remorse of voice? Is there no respect of place, persons, nor time in you? We, we, we did keep time, sir, in our catches. Snack up. <laughs> Sir Toby, I must be round with you. My lady bade me tell you that though she harbors you as her kinsman, she's nothing allied to your disorders. If you can separate yourself and your misdemeanors, you are welcome to the house. If not, and it would please you to take leave of her, she is very willing to bid you farewell. Farewell, dear heart, since I must needs be gone. Nay, good Sir Toby. Mistress Mary, if you prized my lady's favor at anything more than contempt, yes. you would not give means for this uncivil rule. She shall know of it by this hand. Malvolio exits. Go shake your ears. <laughs> to as good as Twere as good a deed as to drink when a man's a hungry, to challenge him the field and then to break promise with him and make a fool of him. Do it, knight. I'll write thee a challenge, or I'll deliver thy indignation to him by word of mouth. Sweet Sir Toby, be patient for tonight. Since the youth of the Counts was today with thy lady, she's much out of quiet. For Monsieur Malvolio, let me alone with him. 
I do not gull him into a nayward and make him a common recreation. Do not think I have wit enough to lie straight in my bed. I know. I can do it. Hmm. Excellent. I smell a device. I have it in my nose, too. <laughs> Sport Royal, I warrant you. I know my physic will work with him for this night to bed and dream on the event. Farewell. Mariah exits. Good night, Penethlesia. Oh, me. She's a good wench. She is a beagle, truebred, and one that adores me. What of that? I was adored once too. <laughs> let's let's go to bed night. Thou hadst need send for more money. If I cannot recover your niece, I'm a foul way out. Send for money, knight. If thou hast her not in the end, call me cut. If I do not, never trust me. Take it how you will. Come, come. I'll burn some slack. Tis too late to go to bed now. Come, knight. Come, knight. They exit. And we enter on Orsino's palace. Enters Orsino. <laughs> Viola and Curio. Give me some music. Now, good morrow, friends. Now, good Cesario, but that piece of song, that old antique song we heard it last night, methought it did relive my passion much. More light airs and recollected terms of those most brisk and giddy paced times. But come, one verse. He is not here, so please, your lordship, that should have sang it. Who was it? Uh, Fessy, the jester, my lord, a fool that the lady Olivia's father took much delight in. He is Seek him out. out. Seek him out and play the tune while. If ever thou shalt love in the sweet pangs of it, remember me. For such as I am, all true lovers are unstayed and skittish in all motions zealth. Save the constant image of the creature that is beloved. How dost thou like this tune? It gives a very echo to the seat where love is throned. Thou dost speak masterly. My life upon it, young though art, thine eye hath stayed upon some favor that it loves. Hath it not, boy? A little, by your favor. What kind of woman is it? Of your complexion. She is not worth me, then what years I faith? About your, 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 about your years, my lord. Too old by heaven. Let the woman take an elder for them, for herself. For boy, however, we do praise ourselves and our fancies are more giddy and unaffirm, more longing, wavering, sooner lost and worn than women's are. I think it well, my lord. Then let thy love be younger than thyself or thy affections cannot behold the bent. Curio and the clown re-enter. Oh, fellow, come. The song we had last night, mark it, Cesario. It, it, it is an old plane, the, the spinsters and the knitters in the sun and the free maids that weave their thread with bones. Do you chant it? It's silly soothe and dallies in innocence of love like the old age. Are you ready, sir? I prithee sing. Come away, come away, death. And in sad Cyprus let me be laid. Fly away, fly away, breath. I am slain by a fair cruel maid. My shroud of white stuck all with you. Oh, prepare it. My part of death, no one so true did share it. Not a flower, not a flower sweet. On my black coffin, let there be strown, not a friend, not a friend greet, my poor corpse, where my bones shall be thrown. A thousand thousand sighs to save, lay me, oh, where sad true lover never find my grave to weep there. Here's for thy pains, boy. 
Oh, no pain, sir. I take pleasure in singing, sir. I'll pay thy pleasure then. Truly, sir, and pleasure will be paid one time or another. <laughs> Give me now leave to leave thee. Now the melancholy God protect thee and the tailor make thy doublet of changeable taffeta for thy mind is a very opal. I would have men of such constancy put to sea that their business might be everything and their intent everywhere. For that's it that always makes a good voyage of nothing. Farewell. That's the exits. Let all give rest this place. Curio and Valentine retire as well. Once more, Cesario. Get thee to yon the sovereign cruelty. Tell her I hold its giddily of fortune, and tis that miracle and queen of gems that nature pranks her and attracts my soul. But if she cannot love you, sir. I cannot be so answered. Truth, but you must say that some lady, as perhaps there is, hath for your love a greater pang of heart as you have for Olivia. You cannot love her? You tell her so, must she not then be answered? There is no woman's sides can, can bide the beating so strong of the passion as, as love doth my heart. No woman's heart so big told so much. They lack retention, make no compare between that the love a woman can bear and that I owe Olivia. Aye, but I know. What dost thou know? Too well what love women to men may own. In faith, they are as true of heart as we. My father had a daughter, loved a woman, loved a man. As it might be, perhaps, were I a woman, I should, your lordship. And what's her history? A blank, my lord. She never told her love, but let concealment, like a worm in the bud, feed on her damask cheek. She pined in thought, and with yellow and green melancholy, she sat like patience on a monument, smiling at grief. Was not this love indeed? We men may say more, swear more, but indeed our shows are more than will, for still we prove much in our vows, but little in our love. But died thy sister of her love, my boy. I am all the daughters of my father's house and all the brothers too, and yet I am not known. So shall I to this lady? Aye, that's the theme. To her in haste and give this jewel. See, my love can take no place. Bid no Danae. They exit and we are at Olivia's garden. Enters Sir Toby Balch, Sir Andrew, and Festy. Come thy ways, Signor Festy. I all come. If I lose the scruple of this sport, let me be boiled to death with melancholy. <laughs> we will fool him black and blue, shall we not, Sir Andrew? If we do not. It is pity of our lives. <laughs> Here comes the little villain. Enters Mariah. How now, my medal of India? <laughs> Get you all three into the box tree. Malvolio is coming down this walk. He has been yonder in the sun, practicing behavior to his own shadow this half hour. Observe him. For the love of mockery. <laughs> For I know this letter will make a contemplative idiot of him. So, in the name of Justin, lie down, lie down, in there. Head. Enters Malvolio. Tis fortune, all is fortune. Mariah once told me she did affect me and I have heard herself come thus far that should she fancy it should be one of my complexion. Besides, she uses me with a more exalted respect than anyone else that follows her. What should I think on it? Here's an overweening rogue. Oh, peace. Contemplation makes a rare turkey cock of him. How he jets under his plumes. Slights, I could so beat the rogue. Peace, peace, I say. To be Count Malvolio. <laughs> rogue. Pistol him, pistol him. Peace, peace. There is example for it. The Duke of Sussex married the American of television. Fire on him, Jezebel. Oh, peace. Now he's deeply in. Look how imagination blows him. Having been but three months married to her, sitting in my state, calling my officers about me and my 
branched velvet gown, having come from a daybed where I have left Olivia sleeping. Fire and brimstone. Please. And then to have the humor of state, and after a demure travel of regard, telling them I know my place as I would they should know theirs, to for my kinsman, Toby. Oh, shackles. Oh, peace, 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 now, now. Seven of my people with an obedient start make out for him. I frown the while and perchance wind my watch or play with my some rich jewel. Toby approaches. He curtsies there to me. Shall this fellow live? I extend my hand to him thus, quenching my familiar smile with an austere regard of control. Does not Toby take you a blow on the lips then? Saying, cousin Toby, my fortunes having cast me on your niece, give me this prerogative of speech. What? You must amend your drunkenness. Scab. Hey, patience, or we will break the sinews oh. of our plot. Besides, you waste the treasure of your time with that foolish knight. That's me, I warrant you. One Sir Andrew. I knew it was, for many do call me a fool. <laughs> <laughs> what employment have we here? Hmm. Uh, now is the woodcock near the in the spirit of humor, intimate, read aloud to him. By my life, this is my lady's hand. This be her very C's, her U's, her T's, and, and thus she makes her great P's. It is in contempt of question her hand. Her C's, her U's, and her T's? Why that? To the unknown beloved, this and my good wishes her very phrases. By your leave, wax soft, to whom should this be? This one's him, liver and all. <clears throat> Jove knows I love, but who? Lips do not move. No man must know, no man must know. What follows? The numbers altered. No man must know if this should be thee, Malvolio. <laughs> I may command where I adore, but silence like a Lucrece knife. With bloodless stroke, my heart doth gore. M-O-A-I doth sway my life. A fustian riddle. Excellent wench, say I. M-O-A-I doth sway my life. Nay, but first, let me see, let me see, let me see. I may command where I adore. Well, I mean, she may command me. I serve her. She's my lady. And, and the end, what should that alphabetical position portend? If I could make that resemble something in me softly. M-O-A-I. Oh, hey, make up that. He is now in a cold scent. M, 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 Malvolio, M. Why, that <laughs> begins my name. <laughs> Not I say he would work it out. M, but there is no consonancy in the sequel that suffers under oh. probation. A should follow, but O does. And O shall end, I hope. And then... I comes behind, M-O-A-I. This simulation is not as the former, and yet to crush this a little, it would bow to me, for every one of these letters is in my name. Oh, soft, here follows prose. <clears throat> if this falls into thy hand, revolve. In my stars I am above thee, but be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great. Some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Thy fates open their hands, cast thy humble slough, and appear fresh. Be opposite with a kinsman, surly with servants. Let thy tongue tang arguments of state. Put thyself into the trick of singularity. She thus advises thee, that sighs for thee. 
Remember who commended thy yellow stockings and wish to see thee ever cross guarded. I say, remember, go to thou art made if thou desirest to be so. If not, let me see thee a steward still, a fellow of servants and not worthy to touch fortune's fingers. Farewell, the fortunate unhappy. Daylight and champagne discovers not more. This is open. I will be proud. I will read politic authors. I will baffle Sir Toby. Ooh. I will wash off gross acquaintance. I will be point devise the very man. I do not know for myself to let imagine jade me for every reason excites this. That my lady loves me. She did commend my yellow stockings of late. She did praise my legs being cross guarded. I thank my stars, I am happy. I will be strange, stout, in yellow stockings and cross garnered even with the swiftness of putting on. Jove and my stars be praised. And oh yet, here is a postscript. <clears throat> thou canst not choose but know who I am. If thou entertainest my love, let it appear in thy smiling. Thy smiles become thee well. Therefore, in my presence, still smile, dear my sweet, I prithee. Jove, I thank thee. I will smile. I will do everything that thou wilt have me. Novel, your exits. I could marry this wench for this device. So could I too. Here comes my noble gull catcher. Shall I play my freedom at tray trip and become thy bond slave? If faith or I either. <laughs> <laughs> you will then see the fruits of the sport mark his first approach before my lady. He will come to her in yellow stockings. And tis a color she abhors and cross garnered a fashion she detests. And he will smile upon her. Which now will be so unsuitable to her disposition, being addicted to a melancholy as she is, that it cannot but turn him into a notable contempt. If you will see it, follow me. To the gates of Tartar, thou most excellent devil of wit. I'll make one too. <laughs> they exit. And now we are at intermission. I uh, just wanted to give the actors a chance. You all can take five, two, whatever, however long you need to get a drink or use the restroom. And in the meantime, I am going to talk directly to our audience. You all are amazing. Um, we have broken some records actually uh, in terms of retaining viewers. Uh, it seems like you all are really into this, which is fantastic. Um, Last time we had broken the retention rate and this time we broke it again. So congratulations um, to all of you guys for being such cultured viewers that like Twelfth Night. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to just quickly put on a screen share and um, show you all what it looks like to actually make a donation. Um, thank you all for also being here after that little delay that we had. Um, we actually went live. I, was, I made a whole speech and then realized afterwards that we weren't actually live live. So here we've got a full screen and I'm gonna to go to actingforacause.org. And what we're gonna do is we're going to click on the link and I'm gonna make a donation because I really like the cause too and I wanna make a little donation to it. And anyone who's viewing, take this time to do it with me. So actingforacause.com, I go to donate now, as you saw, so right there, donate now. And it takes me to the EIF. And here we've got, let me see. I want to make sure everything's clear. I'm going to donate, um, you know, like I, I've donated 250 at times today. I'm going to donate 25, okay? Um, I think that's a manageable amount for a lot of people. Uh, you can enter your own amount if you want to do, you know, let's say you can only, really only do five or if you want to do something big. Some people have donated 500. That's been our biggest donation. We've had multiple people do 500. Maybe someone out there can beat it if they really believe in this. I'm gonna quickly go off of screen share while I enter in my credit card number. <laughs> so let me do that. All right, I'm off of screen share now and I'm gonna go ahead and put it in. And um, I'm gonna put in my CV and my billing address. There we go. And I'm from Oak Park, which is right by, it's a suburb adjacent to the city of Chicago and about a 15 minute ride from the hospital that we're supporting. So I know, I know some people who were born there. Um, Let's see, email address, I'm gonna put in 
a Gmail address here, and then I'm gonna click the thing to donate it officially. How amazing, give now. And now I'm gonna go back on screen share. Let's go off of full screen. I'm gonna go back on screen share and ta-da. Oh, nope. <laughs> uh, and almost share, there we go. Ta-da, then you, after you finish your donation, you get to this screen that says, your gift means greater impact. And it tells me, dear Brando, and it says how much I did. And if I scroll down, then it shows my home address. So I'm not gonna do that. Um, all right, I'm gonna quickly get myself uh, a drink and take a break and leave this on this view here. Um, and then we'll be back shortly. Ta-ta. Over. We disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> hey everyone, wait, I just remember people watching us. Hi guys, thank you for tuning in and watching us. Wait, people can still see us? Hello. Uh, maybe, I, I, my guess is- Hello, I think so. I think so. Oh, yeah. I just sat in. Oh. Hope you guys are enjoying this. Oh. Um, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Act two. Act two. We go with that brander. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we have we have to be saying something because people are just. I don't know what they're saying yeah. though. I don't know what everybody's saying. We can't see what they're saying. I guess we could go on to YouTube and then see, but that seems like when that's I a lot shakes. of inception. Spear, shakes, spear, shakes. Spear, spear. <laughs> and we hope that everyone's donating because obviously we're doing this for charity. Um, and even though we're having a lot of fun doing it. But yeah, if you guys can, can donate, I'm sure that Brando was saying that before we all went to get water and use restrooms and so forth. But um, yeah, I know my fr a couple of my friends texted me. They they have never read Shakespeare and they have never seen Shakespeare, and so they have no idea what's happening. But they think it's still very interesting and they're having a blast. Um, but yeah, I should have closed my door. I was like, no, Rue, you can't be in here. It seems like the comment section is very well informed of Shakespeare. They know what's up. Like they they're following. Yeah. Wow, they're doing good. They're, oh, they're into it. I I was gonna say someone could summarize um, Act One on what we just did. Oh yeah, okay. then go for it. <laughs> Not me, but yeah. <laughs> just from the clown's point of view, if if you yeah, can. <laughs> yeah. Um, everyone's dumb. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Love it. I'm really sorry, but the siren was from me living in Brooklyn, New York. Um, <laughs> no worries. It was? Yeah, I'm, I was, I didn't realize. You admit it. it. <laughs> I was wondering who the siren that was. That was funny. I was, I was definitely like, that's either in New York or LA, someone in New York or in LA. Yeah. 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 I, I thought it was uh, Brando, and I thought he was just like... I thought he was playing it off so well. Yeah. Me too. I was like, wow, he yeah. really doesn't care. 
<laughs> I was like, he's, he's using it. <laughs> I couldn't hear anything. And I was like, I don't know if you said your line. So I'm just going to ask. <laughs> you were so funny. I was like laughing. I was like, she, she should just say she has no idea what's happening. I have no idea what's going on. Who was it that joined this? Like the absolute line? Oh gosh, that's all very bad things. Way worse than the siren. Oh, Never happen again. Oh, panic. Uh, I'm no, sure you're that forever. <laughs> um, well, who was the last person yeah. to join this? I know we all kind of did this within like a week. We we were, you know, and I there was someone that joined like yesterday. Or yeah. Like, yeah. Oh hey, who Me. was? That? And then also Brandon. Then Brandon joined 20 minutes for rehearsal. That's right. Yeah. And yeah. Killing it. Killing it so bad. Amazing. Then the singing. I was not ready. It I was, was so just great. thinking that. Yeah, whoa. <laughs> I, was, I was not ready. I was like, ooh. <laughs> I moved. This is, uh, <laughs> this is all made up on the spot. He has so. an original song coming really? out soon. Stay tuned. Oh. oh. But did you really make up those melodies just now? Yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh. What the? So Absolutely. <laughs> it's it's fine, guys. I promise. Oh, no. <laughs> well, all of us are not fine. So. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he'd like we... looked up. I thought he'd like looked up the songs being performed. Yeah. I have no idea yeah. what, what they actually sound like, but if I didn't mm. know from Ben, they... I would have thought too. Yeah, that's crazy. Thanks. Mm -hmm sound like what he said <laughs> are, are we are we good are we ready to to do some some post intermission act two yes yeah Let's boy do it do it Ready. all right um, do we want a three minute countdown again or no <laughs> 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 uh, uh, that was the craziest i felt so like i i think like uh, i got an email that i was dropped from all my uh, agencies it's then i'm like <laughs> let's do act two <laughs> Um, all right, guys, act two, and we are in Olivia's garden. Enters Viola and the clown. Save thee, friend, and thy music. Dost thou live by thy music? No, sir, I live by the church. Mm. Art thou a churchman? No such matter, sir. I do live by the church, for I do live at my house, and my house doth stand by the church. Is my lady within? My lady is within, sir. I will construe to her that you come. This fellow is wise enough to play the fool, and to do that well, praise a kind of wit. Enter Sir Toby Belch and Sir Andrew. Save you, gentlemen. And you, sir. Do you vow scarred, Monsieur? Have you all see Voltaire Sabatier? Oh, I, I, I hope, sir, you are, and, and I, I am yours. Enters Olivia and the clown. Most excellent, accomplished lady, the heaven, heavens rain odors on you. That youth is a rare courtier. Rain odors. Well. My matter hath no voice to your own most pregnant and vouchsafed you. Odors. Pregnant. Bower saved. I'll, I'll get all three of them ready. Let the garden door be shut and leave me to my hearing. Exit Sir Toby Belch, Sir Andrew, and the clown goes to the side. Give me your hand, sir. My duty, madam, and most humble service. <laughs> what is your name? Cesario, it's your servant's name, fair princess. <laughs> my servant, sir? Twas never merry world since lowly feening was called compliment. You're the servant to Count Rossino, youth. And he is yours, and his must needs be yours. Your servant's servant is your servant, madame. For him, I not think on him. For his thoughts would they were blanks, rather than filled with me. Madam, I come to wet your gentle thoughts on his behalf. Oh, by your leave, I pray you, I bade you never speak of him again. But would you undertake another suit? I had rather hear you solicit that than music from the spheres. Your lady. Give me leave, beseech you. I did send after the Latin enchantment you did hear a ring in chase of you. So did I abuse myself, my servant, and I. Fear me, you, 
Under your hard construction must I sit to force that on you in a shameful cunning, which you knew none of yours. What might you think? So let me hear you speak. I, I pity you. Uh, that's a degree to love. No, not a whit, for tis a vulgar proof that very oft we pity our enemies. Why, then, methink it is time to smile again. O world, how apt the poor are to be proud. If one should be a prey, how much the better to fall before the lion than the wolf. <laughs> the clock upbraids me with the waste of time. Be not afraid, good youth, I will not have you. There lies your way, do west. Then westward home, grace and good disposition attend your ladyship. Well, nothing, madam, to my lord by me. Uh, uh, stay. I, I prithee, tell me what thou thinkest of me. That you do think you are what, not what you are. If I think so, I think the same of you. Then you are right, I am not what I am. I would you were as I would have you be. Would it be better, madam, that I am? I wish it might. But now I am your fool. Oh, what a deal of scorn looks beautiful in the contempt and anger of his lip. By maidhood, honor, truth, and everything, I love thee so, that maugre all thy pride, nor wit nor reason can my passion hide, but rather reason thus, with reason fetter, love soft is good, but given unsought better. By innocence I swear, and by my youth I have one heart, one bosom, and one truth. And that no woman has, nor never none, shall mistress be of it, save I alone. So adieu, good madam. Never more will my master's tear to you deplore. Yet come again, for thou perhaps mayest move that heart, which now abhors to like his love. They exit and enter Sir Toby Belch, Sir Andrew, and the clown. Uh, no, Faith, I'll not stay a jot longer. Thy reason, dear Venom, give thy reason. You must needs yield your reason, Sir Andrew. Mary, I saw your niece do more favors to the Count's serving man than ever she bestowed upon me. I saw it in the orchard. Did she see thee the while, old boy? Tell me that. As plain as I see you now. This was a great argument of love in her toward you. Slight. Will you make an ass of me? She did show favor to the youth in your sight, only to exacerbate you, to awake your dormous valor, to put fire in your heart and brimstone in your liver. This was looked for at your hand, and this was balked, unless you do redeem it by some laudable attempt, either of valor or policy. Ants be anyway, it must be with valor, for policy I hate, and his leaf be a brownest as a politician. Why then, build me thy fortunes upon the basis of valor. Challenge me, the Count's youth, to fight with him. There is no way but this, Sir Andrew. Will either of you bear me a challenge to him? Go, write it in a marital hand, be cursed and brief. It is no matter how witty, so it be eloquent and fun of in in invention taunt him with the license of ink about it. And where shall I find you? We'll call thee at the cubicolo. Go! Exit Sir Andrew. We shall have a rare letter from him, but you'll not deliver it. You never trust me then. And by all means, stir on the youth to an answer. I think oxen cannot hail them together. For Andrew, if he were opened, you find so much blood in his liver as will clog the foot of a flea. I'll eat the rest of the anatomy. And his opposite, the youth, bears in his visage no great presage of cruelty. Enters Mariah. Look, where the youngest wren of nine come. <laughs> if you desire the spleen and will laugh yourself to stitches. Follow me, follow me. Oh, yon gull Malvolio has turned heathen, a very renegado. He is in yellow stockings. And I, cr cross guarded? Most villainously. 
I have dogged him like his murderer. He does obey every point of the letter that I dropped to betray him. He does smile his face into more lines than is a new map with the augmentation of the Indies. Come, bring us, bring us where he is. They exit and enter Sebastian and Antonio. I would not by my will have troubled you, but since you make your pleasure of your pains, I will no further chide you. I could not stay behind you. My desire, more sharp than filed steel, did spur me forth. And not all love to see you, but jealousy, what might befall your travel. Being skillless in these parts, which to a stranger, unguided and unfriended, often prove rough and unhospitable, my willing love, the rather by these arguments of fear, set forth in your pursuit. My kind Antonio, I can no other answer make but thanks, and thanks, and ever thanks. And oft good turns are shuffled off with such uncurrent pay. But were my worth, as is my conscience, firm, you should find better dealing. What's to do? Shall we go see the relics of this town? Tomorrow, sir. Best first go see to your lodging. I'm not weary, and tis long tonight. Oh, I pray you, let us satisfy our eyes with the memorials and the things of fame that do renown this city. What do you would... Pardon me, uh, I do not without danger walk these streets. Uh, once in a sea fight against the Countess galleys, I did some service of such note indeed that were I taken here, it would be, it would scarce be answered. The like you slew great number of his people? The offense is not such of a bloody nature. It might have since been answered in repaying what we took from them, which for traffic's sake, most of our city did. Only myself stood out, for which, if I be lapsed in this place, I, I shall pay dear. Do not then walk too oh. open. It doth not fit me. Hold, sir, here's my purse. In the south suburbs at the Elephant is best to lodge. There shall you have me. Why I, your purse? Happily your eyes shall light upon some toy you have desired to purchase, and your store, I think, is not for idle markets, sir. I'll be your purse bearer and leave you for an hour. To the elephant. I do remember. They exit. Enters Olivia and Mariah and an attendant. I have sent after him. He says he'll come. How shall I feast him? What bestow of him? For youth is brought more oft than begged or borrowed. I speak too loud. Where is Malvolio? He is sad and civil, and suits well for a servant with my fortunes. Where is Malvolio? Ah, uh, he's coming, <laughs> madam, but <laughs> in a very strange manner. He is sure possessed, madam. Why? What's the matter? Does he rave? No, madam, he does nothing but smile. Your ladyship were best to have some guard about you if he come for sure. The man is tainted in its wits. Go call him hither. Exits Mariah. I am as mad as he, if sad and merry madness equal be. Mariah re-enters with Malvolio. How now, Malvolio? Sweet lady, ho, ho. <laughs> <laughs> mm, smilest thou? I sent for thee upon a sad occasion. Sad lady, I could be sad. This does make some obstruction in the blood, this cross guttering. But what of that? If it please the eye of one, it is with me as the very true sonnet is. Please one and please all. Why, how doth thou man? What is the matter with thee? <sighs> Not black in my mind, though yellow in my legs, it did come to his hands, and commands shall be executed. I think we do know the sweet Roman hand. Wilt thou go to bed, Malvolio? <laughs> to bed? Aye, sweetheart, and I'll come to thee. God comfort thee, why dost thou smile so? <laughs> How do you, Malvolio? At your request, yes, Nightingale's answer does. Why appear you with this ridiculous boldness before my lady? Be not afraid of greatness. Twas well. Okay. <laughs> what meanest thou by that, Malvolio? Some are born great. Ha! 
Some achieve greatness. What sayest thou? And some have greatness thrust upon them. Heaven restore thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings. Thy yellow stockings? And wish to see thee cross-gartered. Cross-gartered. Go to thou art made if thou desirest to be so. Am I made? If not, let me see thee a servant still. Why, this is very midsummer madness. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Attendant enters. Madam, the young gentleman of the Count Orsino is returned. I could hardly entreat him back. He attends your ladyship's pleasure. Oh, I'll come to him. The attendant exits. Good Maria, let this fellow mm. be looked to. Where's my cousin Toby? Let some of my people have a special care of him. I would not have him miscarry for the, uh, half of my dowry. Exits Olivia and Mariah. Oh, do you come near me now? No worse man than Sir Toby to look to me. This concurs directly with the letter. Re-enters Mariah with Sir Toby and Festy. Which way is he in the name of sanctity? If all the devils of hell be drawn in a little and Legion himself possessed him, yet I'll speak to him. Here he is, here he is. How's it with you, sir? How's it with you, man? Go off. I discard you. Let me enjoy my private. Go off. <gasps> oh, how hollow the fiend speaks within him. Did I not tell you? Sir Toby, my lady prays you have a care of him. <laughs> Does she so? Go to, go to. Peace, peace. We must deal gently with him. Let me atone. How do you, Malvolia? How is it with you? What man defy the devil? Consider he's an enemy to mankind. Do you know what you say? La, you and you speak ill of the devil, how he takes it at heart. Oh, pray God, may he not be bewitched. How now, mistress? Oh, Lord. Prithee, hold thy peace. This is not the way. <clears throat> Do you not see you move him? Let me alone with him. Why, how now, my bacock? How dost thou chuck? Sir. Get him to say his prayers. Good Sir Toby, get him to pray. My prayers, minx. No, I warrant you, he will not hear of godliness. Go hang yourselves all. You are idle, shallow thing. Oh. I am not of your element. You shall know more hereafter. Malvolio exits. Is it? <laughs> if this were played upon a stage now, I could condemn it as an improbable fiction. Come, we'll have him in a dark room and bound. My, my niece is ready in the belief that he's mad. But see, but see. Enter Sir Andrew. More matter for a May morning. Here's the challenge. Read it. Warrant there's vinegar and pepper in it. Is it so saucy? Hey, it is. I warrant him do but read. Give me. <clears throat> if this letter move him not, his legs cannot. I'll give it to him. He may have very fit occasion for it, for he is in some commerce with my lady, but... We'll by and by depart. Go, Sir Andrew, scout for me at the corner of the orchard. As soon as ever thou seest him, draw. And as thou drawest, swear, horrible, away. Nay, let me alone for swearing. <laughs> Sir Andrew exits. Now will not I deliver his letter, but I will deliver his challenge by word of mouth. Set upon Ague Cheek a notable report of valor and drive the gentleman in a most hideous opinion of his rage, skill, fury, impetuosity, that this will fright him both, them both, that they will kill one another by the look. Re-enters Olivia with Viola. Here he comes with your niece. Give them way till he take leave and presently after him. I will meditate the while upon some horrid message for a challenge. Exit Sir Toby Belch and Mariah. 
I have said too much unto a heart of stone, and laid mine honour to uncherry out. With the same havia that your passion bears grows on my master's grief. Here, wear this jewel for me. It is my picture. Refuse it not, it hath no tongue to vex you. And I beseech you, come again tomorrow. What shall you ask of me that I'll deny, that honour saved may upon asking give? Nothing but this, your true love for my master. How with mine honour may I give him that, which I have given to you? I will acquit you. Well, come again tomorrow. Fare thee well. A fiend like thee might bear my soul to hell. Exits Olivia, re-enters Sir Toby Belch and Mariah. Gentlemen, God save ye. <clears throat> and you, sir? That defence thou hast, betake thee to it. Of what nature the wrongs are thou hast done him, I know not. But thy interceptor, full of despite, bloody, as the hunter attends thee at the orchard, end. Dismount thy tuck, be yer in thy preparation, for thy assailant is quick, skillful, and deadly. You mistake, sir. I am sure no man hath any quarrel with me. My remembrance is very free and clear from any image of offence done to any man. Hmm. You'll find it otherwise, I assure you. Therefore, betake you to your guard. I pray you, sir, what is he? He is a knight dubbed with an unhatched rapier and on carpet consideration, but he is a devil in private brawl. Souls and bodies have ye divorced three. Ha, nob is his word, give it or take it. This is as uncivil as strange, I beseech you. Do me this courteous office, as to know of the knight what my offense to him is. Is it something of my negligence? Because it's nothing of my purpose. Um, I will do so. Mistress Marion, stay you by this gentleman till my return. Exit Sir Toby Belch. Pray, madam, do you know of this matter? I know the knight is incensed against you, even to a mortal... Uh, even to a mortal abitrement, but nothing of the circumstance more. I beseech you, what manner of man is he? He is indeed, uh, sir, the most skillful, bloody, and fatal opposite that you could have possibly found in any part of Illyria. Uh, will you walk towards him? I will make your peace with him if I can. I shall be much bound to you for it. I am one that I'd rather go with Sir Priest than Sir Knight. I care not, know, not who knows of my medal. They exit and re-enter Sir Toby Belch, now with Sir Andrew. Why, man, he's a very devil. I have not seen such a farrago. I had passed with him, rapier, scabbard and all, and he gives me the stuck in with such a mortal motion. That is inevitable, and on the answer, and he pays you as surely as your feet hit the ground, they step on. They say, uh, he has been fencer to the Sophie. Pox on it, I, I, I'll not meddle with him. Hey, but he will not now be pacified. Mary can scarcely hold him yonder. Plague on it, and I thought he had been valiant and so cunning in fence, I'd have seen him damned air. I'd have challenged him. Let him let the matter slip, and uh, I'll give him my horse, Great Capulet. I'll, I'll make the motion. Stand here. Make a good show on it. This shall end without the perdition of souls. Mary, I'll ride your horse as well as I ride you. <laughs> Re-enters Mariah and, Viol and Viola. I have his horse to take up the quarrel. I have persuaded him the youth's a devil. Oh, he is as horribly conceited of him, and, and pants, and looks pale, as if a bear were at his heels. There's no remedy, sir. He will fight with you for oath's sake, Mary. He hath better bethought him of his quarrel. And he finds that now scarce to be worth talking of, therefore, draw. 
for the supportance of his vow. He protests he will not hurt you. Pray God defend me. A little thing would make me tell them how much I lack of a man. Just give ground if you see him furious. Come, Sir Andrew. There is no remedy. The gentleman will, for his honor's sake, have one bout with you, but he cannot by the duello avoid it. But he has promised me, as he is a gentleman and a soldier, he will not hurt you. Come on, do it. Pray God he keep his oath. I do assure you it is against my will. They draw and there's a comedic fight. Enters Antonio. One, sir, that for his love dares yet to do more than you have heard him brag to you he will. Nay, if you be an undertaker, I am for you. They draw and they almost fight, but some officers enter. Oh, good sir Toby, halt. Here comes the officer. I'll be with you, Anon. Pray, sir, put your sword up, if you please. Mary will I, sir. And for that, I promise you I'll be as good as my words. He will bear you easily and reigns well. Uh, this is the man. Antonio, I arrest thee at the suit of Count Orsino. Oh, oh you do mistake me, sir. <laughs> no, sir, no jot. I know your favor well, though now you have no sea cap on your head. Take him away. He knows I know him well. I must obey. This comes with seeking you, uh, but there's no remedy. I shall answer it. What will you do now my necessity makes me ask you for my purse? You stand amazed, but, but be of comfort. Come, sir, away. I must entreat of you some of that money. What money, sir, for the fair kindness you have showed me here? I'll lend you something as my having is not much. I'll make a division of my presence with you. Behold, here is half my profile. Will you deny me now? It's possible that my deserts to you can lack persuasion? Do not tempt my misery, lest that it makes me so unsound a man as to upbraid you with those kindnesses that I have done for you. I know of none, nor know I you by voice or by any feature. Oh, heavens themselves. Come, sir, I pray you, go. Let me speak a little. This youth that you see here, I snatched one half out of the jaws of death. What is that to us? The time goes by. Away. But oh, how vile and idle proves this God. Thou hast, Sebastian, done good feature of shame. In nature, there's no blemish but the mind. None that can be called deformed but the unkind. Virtue is beauty, but the beauteous evil are empty trunks or flourished by the devil. The man grows mad. Away with him. Come, come, sir. <sighs> Lead me on. Antonio and the officer exits. He thinks his words do from such passion fly that he believes himself, so do not I. Prove true imagination, I'll prove true that I, dear brother, be now taken for you. Exits from uh, Viola. Come hither, knight. Come hither. <clears throat> Mary will whisper over a couplet or two of the most sage saws, a very dishonest paltry boy, and more a coward than a hare. His dishonesty appears in leaving his friend here in necessity and denying him for his cowardship. Ask Mariah. Yeah, coward, a most devout coward, religious in it. Slid, I'll after him again and beat him. Do. Cuff him soundly, but never draw thy sword. And I do not. Come, let's see the event. I dare lay any money, twill be nothing yet. They exit. Enter Sebastian and Festy. Will you make me believe that I'm not sent for you? Go to. Go to. Thou art a foolish fellow. Let me be clear of thee. Well held out, I faith. No, I do not know you, nor I am not sent to you by my lady to bid you come speak with her, nor your name is not Master Cesario, nor this is not my nose either. Nothing that is so is so. I, I prithee, vent thy folly somewhere else. Thou knowest not me. Vent my folly. 
<laughs> He's heard that word of some great man and now applies it to a fool. Vent my folly. I prithee now, ungird thy strangeness and tell me what I shall vent to my lady. Shall I vent to her that thou art coming? I prithee, foolish Greek, depart from me. Here, th there's money for thee. If you tarry longer, I shall give worse payment. By my troth, thou hast an open hand. These wise men that give fools money get themselves a good report after 14 years purchase. Enter Sir Andrew, Sir Tro Toby Belch, and Mariah. Now, sir, have I met you again? There's for you. Ow! What? But there's for thee. Ow. And there and there. God, are all the people mad? Oh, sir, or I'll throw him your dagger over the house. This will I tell my lady straight. I would not be in some of your coats for two pence. And it's the clown. Come, sir, hold. Nay, let him alone. I'll go another way to work with him. I'll have an action of battery against him, if there be any law in Illyria. Though I struck him first, yet it's no matter for that. Let go thy hand. Come, sir, I will not let you go. Come, my young soldier, put up your iron. You're well fleshed, come on. I will be free of thee. Huh, huh, what wouldst thou now? Oh. If thou darest tempt me further, draw thy sword. Whoa, what, nay. Then I must have an ounce or two of this malapert blood from you. And oh, little... Toby, on thy life I charge thee, hold. Madam. Will it ever be thus, ungracious wretch, fit for the mountains and barbarous caves where manners never were preached? Out of my sight! Be not offended, dear Cesario. Rudes be begone. Sir Toby exits, as well as Sir Andrew and Mariah. I prithee, gentle friend, let thy fair wisdom, not thy passion, sway in this uncivil and thou unjust extent against thy peace. Go with me to my house, and hear thou there how many fruitless pranks this ruffian hath botched up, that thou thereby mayest smile at this. Thou shalt not choose but go. Do not deny, be shrew his soul for me. He started one poor heart of mine in thee. Relish is in this. How runs the stream? Or I am mad, or else this is a dream. But fancy still my sense in Lethe steep, if it be thus to dream, still let me sleep. Nay, come, I prithee. Would thou be ruled by me? Madam, I will. Oh, say so and so be. <laughs> they exit. We enter Olivia's house and enters the clown with Malvolio. Hey, Robin, jolly Robin, tell me how thy lady does. Fool! My lady is in kind, perdy. Fool! Alas, why is she so? Fool, I say! She loves and Who calls, huh? Master Malvolio? Good fool, as ever thou wilt deserve well at my hand, help me to a candle and pen, ink and paper. As I am a gentleman, I will be thankful to thee for it. Master Malvolio? Aye, good fool. Alas, sir, how fell you beside your five wits? Fool, there was never a man so notoriously abused. I am as well in my wits, fool, as thou art. But as well? Then you are mad indeed if you be no better in your wits than a fool. They have propertied me here, keep me in darkness, send ministers to me, asses, and do all they can to face me out of my wits. Good fool, help me to some light and some paper. I tell thee, I am as well in my wits as any man in Lyria. Well a day that you were, sir. By this hand I am, good fool, some ink, paper, and light, and convey what I will set down to my lady. It shall advantage thee more than ever the bearing of letter did. I will help you to it, but tell me true, are you not mad indeed, or do you but counterfeit? Believe me, I am not, I tell thee true. Nay, I'll ne'er believe a madman till I see his brains, but I'll fetch you your light and paper and ink. Fool, I'll requite it in the highest degree, I prithee be gone. I am gone, sir, and anon, sir, I'll be with you again in a trice. Like to the old vice, your need to sustain, who with a dagger of lath in his rage and his wrath cries, ah, ah, to the devil, like a mad lad, pare thy nails, dad, adieu, good man, devil. 
He exits, and we enter on Olivia's garden. Sebastian enters the scene. This is the air. That is the glorious sun. This pearl she gave me, I do feel it and see it. And though tis wonder that enwraps me thus, yet tis not madness. Where's Antonio then? I could not find him at the elephant, yet there he was, and there I found this credit that he did range the town to seek me out. His counsel now might do me golden service. For though my soul disputes well with my sense that this may be some error, but no madness, yet doth this accident and flood of fortune so far exceed all instance, all discourse, that I am ready to distrust mine eyes and wrangle with my reason that persuades me to any other trust, but that I am mad. Ooh, or else the lady's mad. Yet, if it were so, she could not sway her house, command her followers, take and give back affairs and their dispatch with such a smooth, discreet, and stable bearing as I perceive she does. There's something in it that is deceivable. Oh, but here the lady comes. Enters Olivia with a priest. Blame not this haste of mine. If you mean well, now go with me and with this holy man into the chantry by. There before him and underneath that consecrated roof, plight me with the full assurance of your faith that my most jealous and too doubtful soul may live at peace. What do you say? I'll follow this good man and go with you. And having sworn truth ever will be true. Then lead the way, good father, and heaven so shine that they may fairly note this act of mine. They exit. Before Olivia's house enters the clown and Mariah. Now, as thou lovest me, let me see his letter. Good mistress Mary, grant me another request. Anything? Do not desire to see this letter. This, this, this is to give a dog and in recompense desire my dog again. Enters Orsino and Viola. Belong you the Lady Olivia friends? I, sir, were some of her trappings. I know thee well. How dost thou, my good fellow? Truly, sir, the better for my foes and the worse for my friends. Just the contrary, the better for thy friends. No, sir, the worse. How can that be? Mary, sir, they praise me and make me an ass of me. Now, my foes tell me plainly I'm an ass, so that by my foes, sir, I profit in the knowledge of myself, and by my friends, I'm abused. Why then the worse for my friends and the better for my foes? Why, this is excellent. By my troth, sir, no, though it please you to be one of my friends. Thou shalt not be worse for me, there's gold. But that it would be double dealing, sir. I would, could you make it another? You can fool me no more out of money on this throw. If you will let your lady know that I'm here to speak with her and bring you along with you and bring her along with you, it may awake your bounty further. Mary, sir, lullaby to your bounty till I come again. I go, sir, but as you say, sir, let your bounty take a nap. I will awaken soon. Enters the clown and Mariah. He comes a man, sir, that did rescue me. Enters Antonio, an officer. That face of his, I do remember well, yet the last I saw it, it was besmeared as black as Vulcan in the smoke of war. What's the matter? Orsino, this is that Antonio that took the phoenix and her fraught from candy. And this is he that did the tiger board when your young nephew Titus lost his leg. Here in the streets, desperate of shame and state, in private bravel, did we apprehend him. He did me kindness, sir, drew on my side, but in conclusion put strange speech upon me. I know not what t'was but distraction. Notable pirate! Thou salt water thief, what foolish boldness brought thee to attend their mercies from thou? In terms so bloody and so dear, hast made thine enemies? Orsino, noble sir, 
be pleased that I shake off these names that you give me. Antonio never yet was thief or pirate, though I confess on base and ground enough, Orsino's enemy. A witchcraft drew me hither. That most ungrateful boy there by your side from the rude seas enraged and foamy mouth did I redeem for his sake that I expose myself pure for his love into the danger of this adverse town drew to defend him when he was beset where being apprehended his false cunning taught him to face me out of his acquaintance and grew a 20 years removed thing while one would wink denied me my own purse which I had recommended to his use not half an hour before. How can this be? When came he to this town? Today, my lord, and for three months before, not interim, not a minute's vacancy, both day and night did we keep company. And here comes the countess. Here comes the countess. Now heaven walks on earth, but for thee, fellow, fellow, thy words are, are madness that, that, that three months this youth had tended upon me, but more of that uh, anon, take him aside. What would my Lord, but that he may not have, wherein Olivia may seem serviceable. Cesario, you do not keep promise with me. Madam. Gracious Olivia. What do you say, Cesario? Good my Lord. My lord would speak, my duty hushes me. If it be aught to be the old tune, my lord, it is as fat and fulsome to mine ear as howling after music. Still so, so cruel. Still so constant, lord. What, what to, to perversiveness, you, you uncivil lady, to, to whose ingrate and unauspicious altars my soul, the, the faithful, the faithfulest offerings hath be, Breathe out the, the ever devotion tendered, what shall I do? Even what it please, my lord, that shall become him. Why should I not? Had, had, I, had I the heart to do it, kill what I, what I love? A savage jealousy that, that sometimes savors nobly. But hear me this, since you non regardants cast my faith, and part I partly know the instrument that screws me from my place and turn your favor. Live you the marble-breasted tyrant still, but this your minion, whom I know you love, and whom by heaven I swear I tender dearly him, will I tear out of that cruel eye where he sits crowned in his master's spite? Come, boy, with me. My thoughts are ripe in mischief. I'll sacrifice the land that I love to spite a raven's heart within a dove. Then I am most drunk and apt and willingly to do you rest a thousand's death would die. Where goes Cesario? After him I love. More than I love these eyes, more than my life, more by all mores than ever shall I love wife. If I do feign, you witnesses above, punish my life for tainting my love. I me detested. How am I beguiled? Who does beguile you? Who does you do wrong? Hast thou forgot thyself? Is it so long? Call forth the Holy Father. Come away. Whither, my lord? Cesario, husband, stay. Husband? Aye, husband. Can he that deny? Her husband, Sirrah. No, my lord, not I. Alas, it is the baseness of thy fear that makes thee strangle thy propriety. Fear not, Cesario. Take thy fortunes up. Be that thou knowest thou art, and then thou art as great as thou fearest. Priest enters. Oh, welcome, Father. Father, I charge thee by thy reverence here to unfold what thou dost know hath newly passed between this youth and me. A contract of eternal bond of love, confirmed by mutual joinder of your hands, since when, my watch hath told me, toward my grave, I have traveled but two hours. O oh, thou dissembling cub, what wilt thou be when, when the time hath sowed a grizzle to the, on thy case? Or thy not thy craft so quickly grow? Uh, that on thine own trip shall be thine overthrown. Farewell and take her. But direct thy feet where thou and I hence may never meet. 
My lord, I do protest. Oh, do not swear. Hold little faith. Thou, though, hast too much fear. Enter Sir Andrew. For the love of God, a surgeon, send one presently to Sir Toby. What's the matter? He has broke my head across and has given Sir Toby a bloody coxcomb, too. Who has done this, Sir Andrew? The Count's gentleman, one Cesario. We took him for a coward, but he's the very devil incarnate. My gentleman? Cesario? Odds, lifelings, here he is. You broke my head for nothing, and that that I did, I was set on to do it by Sir Toby. Why do you speak to me? I never hurt you. You drew your sword upon me without cause, but I bespoke you fair and hurt you not. If a bloody coxcomb be a hurt, then you have hurt me. I think you said nothing by a bloody coxcomb. Enter Sir Toby and the clown, Festy. Here comes Sir Toby halting. You shall hear more, but if he had not been in drink, he would have tickled you other gates than he did. How oh, now, gentlemen? How is it with you? That's all one. Has hurt me, and there's the end on it. So, didst see the surgeon sought. Oh, he's drunk. Sir Toby, an hour agone, his eyes were set at eight in the morning. Then he's a rogue, and a passy measures pavement. I hate a drunken rogue. Away with him. Who hath made this havoc with them? I'll help you, Sir Toby, because we'll be dressed together. Will you help? An asshead and a coxcomb and a knave. A thin-faced knave, gull. Get him to bed, and let this hurt be looked to. Exits the clown, Mariah, Sir Toby, and Aunt Sir Andrew, and enters Sebastian. I'm sorry, madam, I have hurt your kinsman. But, had it been the brother of my blood, I must have done no less with wit and safety. You throw a strange regard upon me. Oh, and by that I do perceive it hath offended you. Pardon me, sweet one, even for the vows we made each other, but so late ago. One face, one voice, one habit, and two persons, a natural perspective that is and, and is not. Antonio! Oh, my dear Antonio! How have the hours racked and tortured me since I have lost thee? Sebastian, are you? <laughs> what, fearest thou that, Antonio? How, how have you made division of yourself? An apple cleft in two is not more twin than these two creatures. Which is Sebastian? Most wonderful. Do I stand there? I never had a brother. I had a sister whom the blind waves and surges have devoured. Of charity, what kin are you to me? What countryman, what, what name, what parentage? Of Messaline, Sebastian was my father, such as Sebastian was my brother, too. So went he suited to his watery tomb. Were you a woman, as the rest goes even, I should my tears let fall upon your cheek and say thrice welcome drowned Viola. My father had a mole upon his brow. And so did mine. And died that day when Viola from her birth had numbered thirteen years. Oh, that record is lively in my soul. He finished indeed his mortal act that day that made my sister 13 years. If nothing lets to make us happy both but this, my masculine usurped attire, now I am Viola. <laughs> huh. So comes it, lady, you have been mistook. But nature to her bias drew in that. I mean, you would have been contracted to a maid. Nor are you therein by my life deceased. You are betrothed both to a maid and man. Be not amazed. Right noble is his blood, and if this be so, as yet the glass seems true, I shall have share in this most happy wreck. Boy, thou hast said to me a thousand times, thou never shouldst love a woman like me. And all those sayings will I overswear, and those swearings keep as true in my soul as doth that orbed continent the fire that severs day from night. Give me thy hand, and let me see thy woman's weeds. The captain that did bring me first on shore hath my maiden's garments. He upon some action in now endurance at Malovio's suite, as 
Malvolio is suit, a gentleman and follower of my ladies. He shall enlarge him. Fetch Malvolio hither. And yet, alas, now I remember me. They say, poor gentleman, he's much distract. Re-enters Festi with a letter and Mariah. A most extracting frenzy of my own, for my remembrance clearly banished his. How does he, sirrah? Truly, madam, he holds Beelzebub at the stave's end as well as a man in his case may do, as here writ a letter to you. Open it and read it. Okay, look then to be well edified when the fool <laughs> delivers the madman. <clears throat> By the Lord, madam. How now, art thou mad? No, madam, I do but read madness. And your ladyship will have it as it ought to be. You must allow box. Prithee, read it thy right wit. So I do, Madonna. But to read his right wits is to read thus, therefore, perpend my princess and give ear. Read it you, Mary. Uh, by the Lord, madam, you wrong me. And the world shall know it, though you have put me into darkness and given your drunken cousin rule over me. Yet have I the benefit of my senses as well as your ladyship. I have your own letter that induced me to the semblance I put on. Think of me as you please. I leave my duty a little unthought of and speak out of my injury. The madly used Malvolio. Did he write this? Aye, madam. This saber's not much of distraction. See him delivered. Mariah, bring him hither. Mariah exits. My lord, so please you, these things further thought on. To think me as well as a sister, as a wife. One day shall crown the alliance on it. So please you, here at my house and at my proper cost. Madam. I am most apt to embrace your offer. Your master quits you, and since you called me your master for so long, here is my hand. You shall, for the first time, be your master's mistress. A sister you are she. Mariah re-enters with Malvolio. Is this the madman? Aye, my lord, this same. How now, Malvolio? Madam, you have done me wrong. Notorious wrong. Uh, have I, Malvolio? No. Lady, you have. Pray you, peruse that letter. You must not now deny it is your hand. Write from it if you can in hand or phrase or say tis not your seal or not your invention. You can say none of this. Well, grant it then and tell me in the modesty of humor why you have given me such clear lights of favor, bade me come smiling and cross gartered to you to put on yellow stockings and to frown upon Sir Toby and the lighter people and acting this in an obedient hope. Why have you suffered me to be imprisoned? kept in a dark house and made the most notorious geck and gull that e'er invention played on. Tell me why. Alas, Malvolio, this is not my writing. Though I confess, much like the character, but out of question, it is Mariah's hand. And now I do bethink me, it was she first told me thou wast mad, and camest in smiling, and in such forms which here were presupposed upon thee in the letter. For thee be content, this practice hath most truly passed upon thee. But when we know the grounds and authors of it, thou shalt be both the plaintiff and the judge of thine own cause. Why, some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. I was one, sir, in this interlude. By the Lord, fool, I am not mad. But do you remember? Madam, why laugh you at such a barren rascal? And you smile not, he's gagged. And thus the whirly gig of time brings in his revenge. I'll be revenged on the whole pack of you. Malvolio exits. He hath been most notoriously abused. <laughs> Pursue him and treat him to a peace. He hath not told us for the captain yet. When that is known and the golden time convince, a solemn combination shall be made 
of our dear souls. Meantime, sweet sister, will you not part from hence? Cesario, come, for so you shall be, and while you are a man, but when in other habits you are seen, Cesario's mistress and his fancy's queen. Exits all except for the clown. When that I was a little boy with hey ho, the wind and the rain, a foolish thing was what was but a toy for the rain, it raineth every day. But when I came to man's estate with hey ho, the wind and the rain, gainst knives and thieves men shut their gate, for the rain it raineth every day. But when I came alas to wife with hey ho the wind and the rain, by swaggering could I never thrive for the rain, it raineth every day. But when I came unto my beds with hey ho the wind and the rain, with toss pots still had drunken heads for the rain, it raineth every day. A great while ago, the world begun with hey ho, the wind and the rain. But that's all one, our play is done, and we'll strive to please you every day. He exits, and thus ends Twelfth Night. Just before we shut off completely, I'm going to ask everyone who stayed along for the entire ride. I think first, you deserve a huge thank you just for being part of this. The audience is very important. And even in this format where we don't see you, it's incredible you know, to be able to, I see how many people entered into this live stream at any given time. We're approaching around 20,000, which is very nice. That's really incredible. No theater has 20,000 front streets, front row seats. And yet all of you were here in the front row uh, watching this play and, and maybe watching it for the second time or for the first time or for the millionth time. Uh, thank you so much again for tuning in. Uh, if you have not donated yet, go to actingforacause.org, actingforacause.org, actingforacause.org. I almost put that as a line for Festy to sing because I want everyone to remember to go and donate because that's why we're doing this. Um, and again, just one more huge thank you to our actors. I'll be in touch with all of you. You all were incredible. Thank you so much for devoting your time and your excellence to this amazing uh, little production of Twelfth Night. Thank you again for your time. Take care.